Hello, my crafty friends again. This is Lori, Girl on the Ridge. I will attempt a tutorial on how I do my grungy envelopes. There are a lot of steps, and in the previous video, I showed you how I had a stack of these um, envelopes in different stages. So I'm going to try to do my best. So this is a completed envelope. The um, flap is snippets and waxed over uh, the cover or the front of it is decoupage napkins different ones um, we do lay uh, we do stenciling a little script stamp and wax and I think that's it on this one so I start out with an envelope like this and I showed you in a, again a previous video how I make these with the legal size paper and I sew them. So we pretty much start on this and I will get a napkin. And we'll just, I got these from eBay quite a while ago. Get a napkin, decoupage on. And you know what? I don't have my rose napkins with me, so we'll just I'm just showing you like different steps. I have my I gotta stay in this square. Double check. Yep. I have my uh homemade decoupage that it's uh oh dear. I'll put it in the description. I think it's a half a cup of glue. Or a couple glued a quart I'm not gonna even say but there's recipes all over um, and all I do is I add maybe two to three drops of vintage vintage photo distress ink to get a little color so I just pretty much pick a spot where I want decoupage and that's pretty much that's the easy part so that's that's a simple part <clears throat> and then I, I would take my roses like these and I'd put them over here piece them together or different you know there's hundreds of different napkins so that's how I start with, placing my main focal point. So then I take, I say, let's see, that one's not done. All right, so then after she's dry, I do my inking here the script stamp I'll just place it where I want and I will do let's see this one is a little different I got the roses in the front or back whatever so I'll show you and then I will take let's do the beehive and I'll do the placement of the stencil and it's pretty much it's all personal preference of where you want it and I just take this one, just some modern paste that I had. And I'm just going to pretty much, I, I'm, I don't think, I really don't think. I have enough, enough to think about during the day. I just don't stress about it. So I just place that. I'm not even trying to be perfect about it. And I find that works the best for me. When I try to place it here or there, that's when I mess up. So, and then I just, I, I always do things on a crooked or an angle. I, I don't like straight things. So I guess that's good. So that's pretty much my place. My figure, that's enough. I can always go back. And I will cut the strings a little in here. 
And then, this is, I let this dry for like 24 hours. I don't use the, the heat gun. I'll just let it dry. So that's another step. And sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. Then, all right, this one is, we have everything done. As far as the decoupaging, strip stamp, we have the little stenciling. So now we will do inking. And now the inking, somebody asked how I got the color. I use probably four different kinds of ink. Ground Espresso, Vintage Photo, uh, Rusty Hinge. It depends on what you like. This is a, a little lighter. Now... These, I'm going to use my little, I'm going to use a makeup brush. I have these little daubers. They do, they do not hold up the greatest. Kelly, I've seen your video. You just got to do them lighter. You know, don't do them too hard. And I just do them for special. I don't use them all the time. Especially on these rough, um, raised edges. Sometimes they're kind of sharp. Sometimes I even go over them with a little file, sanding block. So I usually hit them with a dark, and then I like to go over it with a spice marmalade. And I do hope I'm staying in frame. I don't want to keep getting up. And then I just kind of fan it out a little. Sometimes I rub it with my finger. You just got to play with it till you till you like it. I don't worry about my hand either. And don't stress about it. Don't overthink it, guys. Just kind of, if you make a mistake, work with it. It's all right. All right, that's, that's fine. And then sometimes, and like this, this is, my thought process of how I do it. Then I'll probably, let's see, I'll go with the rusty hinge and do a little more. I, I do like the cream in this one because the other ones are, let's see, like really dark compared to that one. But sometimes I'll take the rusty hinge and lightly, very lightly, just kind of, I guess, soften up the white. <laughs> That's such a, I like that really old look. Okay. That's good for now. You can know, that's why I, I usually lay, I probably got about 15 of these going. And eventually, um, they'll have mini bag journals to go inside each one to match the cover, kind of, to coordinate with the cover. Let's put it that way. All right, now we have beeswax. This is the beeswax I use. I got it off of Amazon. Sure, that's coming out. I like the yellow. I also have the white. The yellow makes it vintage. The white makes it look frosty. Um, it comes in these little pellets. Um, somebody asked me if it seeps through the pages. Yes, it will. Over, I've used beeswax for probably over a year now. And what I've learned is I will do it on little, little projects. If I do them in my junk journals... They will be on snippets, on material, on library cards with a corner. Um, to do it on a whole page, it will come through. So I, I kind of try to stay away from that. If I do want to do it on a page, I will do it on a, um, like I said, a hard piece of cardstock. Do what I want to do and then glue it on a page that saves the, the oily um, beeswax. But I love using it because it smells so good and it just has a, it just, I don't know, just so vintage to me. 
So how I do my um, beeswax, I have this tiny little iron that I got at Marshalls for like four bucks. I love my Marshalls. And I always use cloth to soak it up. I will use cheesecloth. I always kind of pick a corner and layer it. I will use... Actually, first I'll use a paper doily, then I use cheesecloth, then I use a piece of lace, then I will use, you know what, let's add a little more pink. This is a um, pink cheesecloth that came from Crafty Irina. Add another little kind of pink because it's going to be yellowish. Then, let's add a piece of cream color. Yeah. Um, I will use a dab of glue underneath that. But I, I use a lot of wax, so it's not going to go nowhere. Then I will put my I'm sprinkling them on. Now sometimes I'll put them on the pitcher. And I, I'll show you. I'll show you in case you, if you mess up how you correct it. And I just say I had this plugged in while my other one was uploading. And I just melt it. And it smells so good. If you want to do it over your picture, you can. Say you get... It melted, and while now she looks like she has something out of her nose, you just go over it. This is very, it gives you time. The heat makes you be able to play with it, so you could just smooth it out. And then I went up into that, and actually, I want a little more. So it just kind of spreads out. Then if there's any pellet, you just go back over it and it just remelts everything. And then sometimes I just go in and make sure it's not sticking. And it usually does that. Came through a little. But usually that's why I always put the material down to make it stick. Or, I'm um, sorry, soak it up. All right, now I see a little bump right here. I don't know if you can. <clears throat> But I will, only because it's her face, if it was anywhere else, I'd just leave it. So you just kind of iron it out. And that's it. And then I will take a piece of pink sari silk. I just started working this. I know a Tatter Dream carries it. Um... Some of it's silky. I know Denise has some that green that's really silky. This one was gifted to me and it's not so silky. It's more cottony, but I love it because I love anything pink or cream. And I'll just make a little bow. Sometimes I twist it. I get my hand in there. Or not. Oh dear, the littlest things. Let me pull it. And then I'll, I'll glue it sometimes over the wax. You're going to have a problem. So when I just solve that, I'll take a little one of my little flowers. More glue. Put that on there. And then we're going to do a little more wax.
That is it. The wax. And another thing that I do, I use. Let's see. I had some. What did my grandson do with it? I, I use this um, Gilder's paste, and I'll hit the like the raised. Um, oh my goodness, stenciling with that to make it gold or. Well, this is copper. Again, I'll use my fingers. This is a little dried up, so what I have to do is I have to get some mineral spirits and let it soak. You don't throw it out because you'll have plenty to use, or it's still got lots of life in it. And I had bought in that when I was doing jewelry stuff, so it's something I've had. And then I'll just kind of, again, some other effect. I have all different colors. There's gold and silver. That's another step, and some of them I will do. Oh, let's see. I'll get my black out. This Gilder's paste really smells, so just be warned if you have that. And that again, that I like to. I like that to dry like 48 hours. And then I'll just do the black. I like how the black makes everything pop up, pop out. And then I'll just keep, like I said, I'll lay them all out and see what needs what. And I will do another, let's do some more waxing because I know that's for a lot of girls. Yeah. Okay. So this one, I like the flower here. Let's do a little side one. Let's do a little something different. Let's do here and a little here. Start with my pink. I'm still filming. Yep. A little pink. Now that's just a little too much. Okay, pink. And I got Different lace. We'll make it hang over a little. Now, actually, that's too. A little cream, and then we'll lay it over. Over there. And we'll do a little piece there. And a little piece of cream there. And let's see. Oh, my little pile over here. Let's do. under here. That's just nice for the wax. I like the yellow because it really gives it a... All right. So I know I got to add more stuff there, but you know what? We're going to... We're going to go with the sprinkle in. And I think I'll come back. There's your dot or your little iron. And if I think too much is going over, then I'll just trim it. I 
I've never actually ever had to try to peel it off, so I don't know how that would work. I usually just stick with whatever comes out. Okay, so not thrilled with that, so we'll cut that out. Don't like that. So we're going to layer another piece, okay, just something, again girl, this is supposed to be fun, so don't get stressed out, over there, Not even coming underneath. So this one, I think we'll do a longer bow. And sometimes I take my sorry silk and just nip it up the middle. Have like the strings and everything. It just goes. And just kind of make a I love this glue but it always bubbles up and before that dries all the way you know what I think we could make that work that so, well, might be too bad don't have any beads left. So yeah, we'll go with the little beads. Put them on before that dries all the way. Stick that right through the wax on. Yeah. And there. See, and I don't like that edge right there, so what I'll do is just give them a couple more dabs or little pieces, and I'm just going to spread that out so it covers that. Yeah, just leave. And I might change it a little. I'll let it dry, let it sit overnight, and I have to do the. Um, I kind of like it like that though. I'll do the. You know, we'll do it really quick here. Placement of. Well, actually, we'll do the damask on this one. We'll do it crooked. I'm terrible at cleaning these off, too. I just moved it. You see, I just moved it, but no big deal. I'll just go over it. Yeah, fine. And here, we'll let open that up. We'll do another one over here. That's that's good. That's kind of a busy. So that is it. I'll let this dry and then I'll go over it with the gold, the black, and the different colors because this is kind of one color. So I need to put shades. I might even put a little green in there. Maybe even a little red. Like I said, it's personal. 
personal preference um if you have any questions i think i've talked long enough if you have any questions about the wax i'm not an expert but i can help you i've learned a lot through mistakes <laughs> so um if i can help you i'd be more than happy to so give it a try like i said these keep an eye out i mean even i think in joanne's they were maybe 6.99 if you do use an iron, make sure that it does not have holes in it because it, it could catch fire. I mean, you obviously have to be careful, but you need an iron with no holes in it. So I think they might make travel irons with no holes. I know the big ones have the holes, but you really have to be very, very careful. So try to get one of these the little, little ones. And I think that's it, guys. I hope that helped. I hope they answered some questions. And I will got to work out a design team project for a femoir, and I'll be back. Bye.